really drank a lot of beer last night. This started after I left the London School of Furniture. I built guitars in my garage for a while, and 25 years later, there are now 10 of us building our own brand of unique guitars out of our workshop in Canterbury. Hi there, I'm Alistair Atkin from Atkin Guitars. Uh, this is our ninth workshop video. I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna show you the electric guitars being made. Lawrence is gonna show you the pick guard being put together and the bridge being fitted. Matt's gonna show you how the necks are made on the CNC machine. Um, so we're gonna cover quite a lot in this episode. Uh, if you enjoy this, please subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the show. Okay, so here we've got a lovely piece of aluminium. It's a quarter of a millimetre thick, and uh, Matt's machined it to be a shielding plate for a Stratocaster. I mean, an S-type acting electric guitar. This one's going on a 63, as it happens, which is over here, looking very handsome on my bench. But the Matt here has machined this and he didn't take the tape off, so I'm having to do it, and I'm about to go sand it downstairs. Because if I can hand the job over to you, I'll do it happen. <laughs> <laughs> can I borrow the blue handle watson jigger this? Yes, yeah, the blue handle watson jigger Okay, so we're going to use a Merca sander with some 80 grit, just to give this a bit of a tidy up. Also gives it the kind of look the originals had as well. Um, it's really cool to be able to make these in-house, because we can tweak every little dimension, every shape, if I say to Matt, oh, can you make that bit a bit bigger or smaller? He just does it and the next one's a little bit better. So that's really cool. You can buy them for about eight quid, but um, you just get given one size then and you can't really do your own thing with it. So um, there's going to be lots of variations on pick guards as we go forward. Like different volume knobs and different switches, different pickup configurations, and we can do it all and um, have a custom shielding plate for each one, which is fun for some people. So today I'm putting together the body of this 63 model, Sunburst, first Sunburst 63 that we've done. Um, I've just painted the shielding paint into the cavity and put a grounded strip in and the tremolo claw has gone in as well. Um, we get to drill holes in it with these really long drill bits, which is quite fun. You ever seen one that long before? That's what she said. And, uh, right, okay. So we've aged the tremolo system. So I've just put this back together after it's all been aged. We've just got these ones in with the Atkin logo on the saddle, which we're all very excited about. You're in there, sweet. <laughs> See the state of my hands as well. We're gonna screw that on now, check it all lines up. To perfection. We we're going for three springs, and uh, there's a special tool for this, but I'm not a fan of special tools. <laughs> they always get lost. Right, so I've just attached this. Now, we like to age everything, but the inside is all nice and shiny, okay? So just age the, the nuts and the surrounding and all the important bits are nice and brand new. So I'm gonna solder some wires onto that and pop that in in a minute. So here's the pit guard, which Phil has aged downstairs which looks pretty cool. So you make these on the CNC machine. Same thing um, as with this, it gives us infinite sort of tweakability making all these parts ourselves. And um, there's gonna be lots of custom options and cool stuff coming up in the future as well, which gives us the ability to do that. Um, so we take this, and this one I made earlier. This is the one we just, so that lays on there like that and that's the shielding paint so <laughs> shielding paint this is the shielding paint um, the shielding plate so that stops any horrible noise coming from things like stage lighting and things like that also computer screens if you're playing in front of your computer we sort of cut down on that because we're using um, 
traditional pickups, so they are noisy in their nature. So everything you can do with shielding, with this, this is a cool vintage thing that you can kind of see on the old guitars. You can kind of see this metal plate, which is kind of a nice look, and it's very efficient for shielding. And then we have the, the graphite paint here, and it's all earthed with this earthing strip. This earth side to the strings, and then it keeps all nice and quiet. So here we've got some potentiometers. These are CTS um, split shaft, whatever that means to most of you. <laughs> These are the good ones. They're very serviceable. Um, you can actually take them apart, put them back together, fix them. It's a nice, nice space here to spray contact cleaner in there. I mean, they're really great parts. Very hard wearing. Um, that's why we use them. So again, we age the outside. So for the washer, the nut and the washer that you're going to see from where the knob is. If I get a knob, knobs that Phil is aged downstairs. Um, it kind of looks cool, but you don't really want to age an electronic component. So these are a bit over the top. So I'm going to give these a little. A little spruce up. No rust, no shine. That's the, the stuff. That's the mantra for aging guitar parts. Well, Alistair doesn't mind a bit of rust, so he is the boss, but yeah, I'm more the no rust, no shine kind of guy. Okay, so that will go in here. All these components are the same in that. Um, it's the same for the volume and the tone. Yeah, audio taper, which means uh, it, it just works well for the way the circuit is on, on this particular guitar. So We've got a spring washer. Keep it doing that annoying thing where they start to twist around if the nuts come loose. Another great thing about these CTS pots is that they, they don't come undone. You just do them up and they stay tight, which is the worst thing if you're ripping out an epic solo and your sound's cutting out, it's just it's not cool. Into the recipe we've got a CRL spring-loaded five-way switch which are pretty nice. They make this satisfying little click as you change from position, which is um, really cool. Also, as with the pots, they're really serviceable. You can pretty much take them apart and spray contact cleaner all over them, and they just last forever. So, one of those. Also, we've got a paper and oil capacitor, which are pretty cool, they're pretty massive. <laughs> 0.047 microfarads, there we go. So that's going to look pretty cool. It's going to sound pretty cool as well. All our screw holes are countersunk on these. We did that on the 50s style one as well, on our 54 strap. It's just a nice touch of everything countersunk, especially if you're playing sort of, any sort of finger picking guitarist will tell you that those big screws really get in the way. Same with the pickups, we'll get to pickups in a minute where we bevel the ends so there's no sharp edges on anything to catch what you're doing. So, here we go. Here's some pickups I made earlier. Right. Um, so, these aren't magnetized yet, which means, um, which means they don't work, um, but they will work once we uh, magnetize them and you have to be you have to do this a particular way so um, the bridge and the neck are one way and the middle is the other way so the bridge and the neck are south up and the middle is north up the middle is also reverse wound so we put the winder on the other direction and what that does it means in the in-between positions, in position two and five, sorry, two and four, 
We've got these two pickups on, or these two pickups on, it'll be hum cancelling, so you get rid of that mains hum, which in some situations is pretty essential. Um, has a cool sound as well. It does sound different. I mean, if you, yeah, those in-between positions, if you've got the reverse polar polarity, it does sound different. Don't ask me why. Some geek out there will know, and uh, please mention it in the comments if you do. <laughs> right, okay, so the covers are on. So I can show you how we magnetize these. Right, here we go. So this is our high-tech magnetizer machine. Can you tell I made it myself? It works really well. So you can adjust the, um, the size just there. So this will just charge the pole pieces. And then we've got a gauss meter on the pickup winder. So we can check that they're all evenly charged. And uh, we'll do that in a sec. And different magnets seem to charge up to different levels of gauss. So you can sort of tell when they're fully charged. This is the, the bridge pickup now. So this is south up. And then when I do the middle one, I'll flip it around. You can just turn the pickup around, but it's easier to sort of do it like this. Okay. Are you rolling? I'm rolling now. Cool. These nice little rubber sleeves. Um, and these are good at reducing microphonics as well. These springs, they can rattle when they're a bit loose and it can answer that squeedy, horrible squeedy microphonic feedback sound you can get. Which isn't really a problem if the pickup's wound well, it, you won't get any microphonic feedback. And you know, Dip all ours in wax. It's called potty. Um, and that, that will cut down on that. But these are an extra measure. And these are great. You just pop it on like that. They make it easier to put together because once you put the screw in, it's like, oh, that one's going to stay there and it's not going to fall on the floor. So it's a win win. You know, less noise and uh, less swearing, which is, as my colleagues would tell you, is a blessing. You know. <laughs> it's like the first time you have sex and you're not sure how the condom works. It's painfully awkward. Twisted wires. This isn't just to look pretty, it does look pretty, but it does add because one wire is earth, it does add an extra layer of shielding as well. So again, it will cut down on noise ever so slightly. And that's, that's good, right? You know? As Tom mentioned before, these are from old McDonald's farm. Oh, they're just so good. All of their tools are so good. This one's not even branded. We've got this nice vintage pushback wire. So it's... Um, it's really cool to work with. You don't have to strip it, you just cut it and push it back. And then you can just slide it back again so it perfectly lines up with your joint. I mean, it's just very, very nice material to work with. And it looks cool as well. It's all of the good. It's very thick, it won't break. It's nice to work with, it looks cool. It's, it's not to like. All right, I'm gonna get some solder here. Do some soldering. Solder. Um, solder. Right, so we're gonna prepare the back of the pot there. It's so shiny, look at that. And then we're gonna, we're gonna put these on one at a time, so. I'm really adept at this. So we're gonna go, put that one there. Keep it looking neat, and then we can push those those back right up to where they were there, and that's a nice earth connection. And then we're going to wire it up to the switch. So let's start with the bridge wire. And these switches are great because you could, you could just see where to put the wires. You just put it in the bridge position, and you can just see where it's connected. It's like, oh, I need to put it on that one. You know. It's, 
you know, you don't need a wiring diagram, you just look and see how it works. It's brilliant. So, so it's solder, not solder. Solder sounds like something that used to be illegal, you know. Solder. What is it, Tom? Sol. Solder. So as in for the sun, as in Helios. Yeah, it's all about most things in life come back to Helios. This is wisdom, <laughs> the wisdom of the atelier. This. <laughs> But in England, we say solder, solder, not solder. And we say root instead of route. But not when we're routing in a guitar making or woodwork capacity. What do you want, boy? That's a pretty cool fire, boy. Uh, Take it. We're always fighting about that fire. You can't blast it. That's face. heat shrink on the hot wire here and that's just a, a safeguard against it shorting out the paint in the cavity because the cavity is shielded so if that ever touches the cavity that's going to short out and your signal is going to go away which I mean it won't touch it anyway but in the future something might get a knock or something and then it's just a little safeguard just to make sure it all keeps rocking. advanced soldering technique it's where you hold the wire and the solder with the same hand at the same time I'm just going to test my wiring you can do this with a meter and bits but this is way more fun it works Points, ten points, ten control. Oh, lovely. We we'll try it with strings. Now I'm going to wait until I screw the pickguard on until we've got the neck on, and Matt's building the neck on the machine downstairs at the moment. This is my world. Computer. Computer number cutting or something. Yeah. Um, we're doing electrics today or electric necks, which we've been meaning to do for a while. And we just, because I think this is about 16 and 17 number of guitars. And we'd set it all up initially, and uh, on one machine, over on CNC2. And uh, then we've installed this wonderful CNC3 machine, which we can do it on. We've had a few teething problems, but it was so bad it's gone home to be fixed. So now, because CNC2 is busy, I'm trying to set it all up on CNC1. Uh, unfortunately, it's been a few weeks since we've done it, so I've kind of forgotten the whole process. I've written it all down though, so let's see how robust my notes have been. We've put the bed on, we've flattened it for the third time, and uh, now we're just starting with these. Oh. Now we're going to answer the door. It wasn't for me, so I'm not interested. Uh, so we take these blanks, and I thickness them, you missed that. Drilled these holes, which did drill in the right place. And then we've done a roughing pass, so it's sort of beginning to look like a guitar neck. And now I'm gonna use my template to cut this out so the pull machine doesn't have to do too much work. It's been really longer than Danny has, I think. Right. <laughs> Marion's been in that. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Alistair. Did Danny come with the building? Yeah. I think he was here. We found a picture of him the other day. It's on the group chat. So young. We're roughing the back of the neck out now. Um, like the one you saw. 
Uh, which is a six minute process. And then we just go through the list, it's smoothing next. We turn it over and start doing the front. Um, cut a channel for the truss rod. Uh, get the radius on the neck and then it goes to Lawrence who sticks the truss rod in. And we'll put a veneer um, fretboard on. And then it'll come back to be finished. Then it goes to Phil and he does his magic. And then the final shaping and sanding and things like that. And it's making a funny noise. Just changing this if it's flat. That's right. Nice. This when it's round. So that's the rough cut, and then this will be the smooth cut. And then that's pretty much the end of the back, I think. That's smooth now. With the little the rounded bit and it's very slowly and carefully across it. So now we're going to turn over and uh, we'll put the radius curve on the fretboard. Uh, cut the. So we're going to rough the top. So we take all that all that extra stuff off there. Then we smooth it. Then we put the truss rod slot in. And then it goes up to Lawrence. And he puts the fretboard on and the truss, the truss rod in and the fretboard on. So it's just three processes now, really. Rough, smooth, like we did on the back. Been up to Lawrence and he put the veneer board on and the truss rod in. Then it's come back down, it's had its last processes done down here, which is putting the frets in and uh, smoothing this part of the headstock, popping the tuner holes in, and then cutting the final shape out. And actually, up to this point, it could have been a Telecaster or a Stratocaster, and then that last shape here is what differentiates it. So, I'm going to cut it out of its with stock, take it to fill it. Here we go. Um, it's, it's candy apple red. And that, Ooh. don't turn that candy apple red. Thank you very much. Look at that. Just what I've always wanted. Ooh. So next, Phil's got to sand that up. Next. 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 Yeah. Sand that up, then it gets sprayed and uh, it's ready to go to its body. Yeah. Lovely. Beautiful. Cool. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, a little bit of information about these electrics. We're hoping to get them out to some shops soon. I think Guitar Guitar are going to be perhaps the first dealer that we go for. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed that, please subscribe to the channel, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll see you next week. Cheers.